the stories of Briscoe and Bradshaw. I will be Bradshaw. That will be the WWE Hall of Famer, Oklahoma's favorite son, Mr. Gerald Briscoe, and he is the 2020 Ultimate Warrior Award winner. He's been called the most philanthropic guy in wrestling. I will certainly agree with that. He is a former Florida Gator standout, played in 44 games, professional football player, and former tag team champion. He is Mr. Titus O'Neill. Titus, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Hey, Titus, man, it's sure is a pleasure. You know, we're neighbors, and we don't get to see each other often because you're that ambassador to WWE, and I'm a retired guy. But anyway, <laughs> I recently saw you on, on an episode of Tank. I got to plug your episode there. It was one of the best I've ever seen. You know, they do. These people, like, what is it, Animal Planet or Discovery Planet? What one of them? You know, it was on Animal Planet. Animal Planet. Animal anyway, Planet. Tank, Tank, uh, Tank is, is the show where they come in and put these custom saltwater aquariums in your home or office. And uh, Titus had an episode on him, and it's probably the most charismatic, most entertaining episode I've seen because most of them are just them boring football players and, and, and basketball players and, and guys. But Titus was a part of the show. He was entertaining. The entire show was fantastic. And, Man, it, it's right down the street from me. I got to stop in there. And I, I'm the only thing, I'm afraid to go to a lawyer's office. I'm afraid they might have some paper for me. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can sneak in and take a look at that aquarium, man, I'm going to do it one day. So thanks for being on the show, man. We'd love to have you. Right in the middle of football season, your gators are looking good. Football is looking good again in the state of Florida. Man, tell us a little bit about your upbringing, how you became a football star, and how you, how you migrated into the sport of professional wrestling. Well, yeah, definitely. Football was definitely not uh, something that I was expected to do much of or anything else for the matter, just because uh, it's well documented that I'm a, I'm a product of a sexual assault. My mother was raped at 11 years old, uh, had me at the age of 12, driven from St. Augustine, Florida, down to Boynton Beach, Florida to have an abortion and uh, jumped out of the car. And three months later, I was born. Uh, I've gone without. I've bounced from place to place. Uh, I was a kid that was labeled a kid that would be dead or in jail by the time I was 16. And uh, I believed that for part of my young adult life. And uh, I did. I was introduced to football as a kid. I played down with the Delray Rocks down in Delray Beach, Florida. Uh, one of the great, greatest football players, really, in, uh, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, Vince Wilfork was one of my best friends. His mother, uh, was my, my family counselor. She was actually our social worker. And she's the one that, uh, that made the call to the sheriff up at, uh, at, at Palm Beach County uh, to get me skipped ahead of the list to go to a place called the Florida Sheriff's Boys Ranch. And it was that place that literally changed my life. You know, one conversation at 12 years old uh, really turned things around for me as I was getting ready to get kicked off of the Boys Ranch because I got into too many fights. And uh, signed a contract that I wouldn't get into another fight. And 30 minutes later, I uh, got into a fight. And the meeting was <laughs> 30 you minutes. Almost, you lasted. almost waited an hour. Yeah, you were yeah. halfway there. <laughs> so people, you know, now that uh, little did they know that that was the beginning of my WWE career. And I was just practicing and working <laughs> towards my current career. But uh, football, you know, was an, an opportunity for me at high school. Uh, you know, I went to Live Oak Swanee High School, uh, played there my freshman year. Uh, you know, Coach Mike Pittman was my high school football coach, and me and another kid from the Florida Shares Boys Ranch named J.W. Hardy were the new kids on the block. And uh, he ran the trap play um, probably about 82 times in a row, both me and J.W. And, uh, uh, you know, we both, I ended up going to the hospital for dehydration and <laughs> just, uh, cramped up bad too. Uh, next day, I uh, I went to my coach's office, Coach Pittman's office, and I said, you know, uh, I don't know if you know much about my background, but, um, you know, I've been through way worse than that practice yesterday. And I said, uh, you know, before I leave here, I'll be one of the greatest football players you ever coached. And, uh you know, he looked at me, he had a big wad of chewing tobacco in his mouth, and he looked at me, and he put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, son, you ain't even made the team yet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said, that's not what I was saying. I said to you that I'll be one of the greatest football players that you ever coached here at this school. And, uh, you know, three years later after that, uh, number one recruiter in the country, any school in the country, 
uh, as a defensive lineman. And uh, Joe, how, how, many, how many offers did you have, Todd? Coming out, of uh, easily, easily seventy something offers. You know, I bundled it down to five. Uh, my my last five were Ohio State, uh, Tennessee. I took my official visit to Ohio State, Tennessee, uh, Florida, uh, Georgia Tech, and uh, uh, Florida State. And uh, you know, it really what 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 no hurricanes in there? No, nah, they were getting they were on uh, getting ready to go on probation. You yeah. know, <laughs> and uh, so just got there. And, um, you know, I I, uh, I really fell in love with, uh, I actually grew up kind of a Florida State fan, uh, simply because at the boys' ranch, we only had like a couple of channels, and uh, they played mostly Florida State's athletics, so it was Florida State basketball, Florida State baseball, Florida State football, and then most of the people that went from my high school over, you know, to college, the majority of them went to to Florida State. Right, um, and live, live Oak isn't that many miles away from uh, from Florida State, either. Uh, Yes, it's kind of not, it's probably the same distance from Gainesville than it is Tallahassee. It's just, uh, we had so many people that went up there and, and, and were successful, Matt Fryer and Ty Fryer and, uh, you know, Eric Smith and so many other guys. Uh, there was only one other player that, you know, that I recall that, that actually went from my high school, and that was Gant Crouch. He was a center. Um, and then I kind of, you know, broke that mold and made, pissed a lot of people off in live oak. Uh, so, uh, but then from there, you know, I, well, yeah, was I, it was it Steve Spurrier's personality that 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 showed out? I tell people all the time, um, you know, I went on my my official visit to Tennessee, and uh, Peyton Manning was my host wow. my first year, my first night. Well, Peyton didn't make it quite, you know, through the night, and. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I, uh, I ended up getting Leonard Little as my host um, for the rest of the remainder of the weekend. And, uh, you know, at that time, Florida pretty much dominated Tennessee. And, you know, I asked a couple of players, um, you know, hey, how you guys, you know, going to do versus, you know, Tennessee. And uh, Derek Chambers, who ended up being one of my roommates in college and, and came over to Florida with me, too. He was on that visit with me. And uh, their response was, uh, you know, hey, we're gonna do what we, you know, we're gonna see what we can do. We can get them, you know. And uh, you know, I, asked, you know, when I went to Florida on my visit, you know, uh, Coach Curry asked me, you know, so how how you how you like your visit with those guys in Tennessee at Rocky Top? And I was like, uh, I was like, it was good, you know. He's like, did they say they're gonna beat us? And he's like, uh, I said, <laughs> they don't see what they're gonna do can do, you know. And uh, and uh, he's like, oh, yeah, wait, we're gonna beat those guys, you know. Uh, and and it's just he had this uh, this this competitiveness about him, but it was just this this confidence. Some people look at it as arrogance, but you know, for for me, I'm a very competitive person. You guys are very competitive. Uh, you don't want anybody that's like, oh, you know, we're gonna see what we can. Don't play the humble route. You know what I mean? No, we're gonna we're gonna beat their ass, um, and we're gonna win a championship. You're gonna win a lot of championships here, and you're gonna get a great education, and you know. And you're gonna have fun doing it. And uh, Coach Spurry is arguably one of the greatest college coaches in the history of college football. Uh, with the fun and gun offense, it was great to play for him. Won a national championship, two SEC championships under him, and uh, he unretired jersey number eleven for me to wear. And uh, uh, because of my story, my backstory of how I ended up, what I had to go through to get to the University of Florida, uh, I'm the first person in my family to graduate from high school. The first person in my family to graduate from college. My mom graduated from high school. You know, after I did, she waited tables and cleaned houses to make ends meet that I've ever met. And uh, I have three younger brothers, and uh, two of those three younger brothers also uh, graduated from high school and also played collegiately uh, football. One played at middle, my youngest brother played at Middle Tennessee State as a defensive back, and my uh, brother above him played at Eastern Michigan as a defensive end. So, uh, you know, uh, football kind of definitely was the route to help me be around uh, structure and discipline and understand. I, I've never had an issue with work. Uh, I was always a hard worker. I worked at the boys' ranch. I bailed hay. I moved cows. I uh, tossed watermelons in the sun. I uh, did tobacco. So uh, work was never an issue for me. It was just my attitude at the time. And it's because a lot of people had told me what I can't do. I'd never graduate from high school. I'd never go to college. I'm too uncoordinated. 
reports, the list went on and on. And uh, that fueled me, you know. And uh, I went from being that performing student to being that high academic scholar and also high you know, athletic, you know, achiever. And um, I get a chance now to watch my kids, you know, follow their dreams in athletics. You know, my oldest son, TJ, is a freshman at the University of Central Florida playing football there. Uh, my youngest son is a junior. Uh, defensive end is being heavily recruited. And I recently adopted a daughter last year, and she's a basketball player, one of the top basketball players there in the state of Florida. And, uh, and to see their work ethic, see how they uh, follow their dreams and their goals, um, but more importantly, how they are as human beings. And uh, the reason why I'm in a position that I'm today is not because I was the most athletic, you know, clearly uh, I've had my slip ups uh, on, on occasion uh, and throughout life, both uh, in, the, in the field of play, but also in, in the field of life. Um, but, you know, I just, you know, I, I feel like, you know, being a good human being and then being surrounded by a good um, amount of, a great amount of human, great human beings, whether they're teammates, coaches, mentors, etc., has allowed me to see life for what it truly is. It is a blessing. You know, I'm not even really supposed to be here technically uh, because of how I was brought into the world. Um, but God had a plan, and uh, I just enjoy living out the plan every single day. You know, people say, "Oh, you should run for office." You know, and you, you, Jerry, you live down here. And, and I'm, one of, I'm one of them, too, Tony. <laughs> I hear people say it all the time, but, you know, I, I, uh, I have zero political aspirations, you know, because uh, regardless of how great of a person I am or can now, be. You, you wouldn't change that po a, a, a image of politician. You're just a nice guy, but you're probably too nice a guy to get in that world, Tony. And Titus, <laughs> you're, too, you're smart and honest. You can't be a politician. No. <laughs> yeah. I, the minute I declare that I'm a Democrat or a Republican, you know, I cut off half of my influence, not because of who I am, but just what party I chose. Uh, and at the end of the day, I just want to do the work. I think that, uh, you know, two aspects of life that should really be bringing people together are dividing people the most, and that's religion, organized religion, and politics. Those are the two institutions that are supposed to be, you know, in it for changing people's lives and making this world a better place. And uh, they haven't done it, you know, and uh, I'm not a religious I'm a man of faith. My faith is in, in, in God and Jesus Christ. Somebody else's faith may be in Allah. Another person's faith may be in a, a spoon or the sun. And that's not going to change uh, how I treat those people. And, that, and the reason why I'm that way is because so many people from all different walks of life, gay, straight, black, white, Hispanic, uh, Republican, Democrat, um, they all had a hand in helping me, that is bullet demand, become who I am today. And so I will never know how many of those, I, I never personally meet half of those people that sold into the Boys and Girls Club that I went to or the Florida Sheriff's Boys Ranch. Uh, I, I'll never be able to say thank you to all of them because I don't know them. Uh, the only thing I can do on a consistent basis is I'll wake up every morning with a grateful heart, uh, and uh, treat people with dignity and respect and uh, be very transparent and, 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 and honest and be a man of morals and convictions. Uh, and, and I've lost some things because of my convictions. I won't do certain things uh, simply because it's not, it's not me. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of that. Uh, my house is paid off. Uh, I have you know, zero debt and uh, uh, several businesses that have been very successful. And, and, uh, and, and I have some, some kids and some dogs to, uh, to keep me happy and, uh, and, happy and, and healthy. But most importantly, I, I understand that there are so many things that are out in the world that, allow, that, that I can, and I'm capable of achieving. And, Hi, uh, Titus, Titus, let me ask you a question here real quick here. I, I, I hate to get you off here, but when you, when you were at the Florida Boys Ranch here, was you aware of the uh, of the background of that Florida Boys Ranch and the, the role that Florida Championship Wrestling had in? Yeah. I was looking through my desk drawer. I got a picture somewhere in my desk drawer of me yeah. with the directors, of the original directors there. So we had a really active uh, part of, uh, of, of that place there. You want to you uh, go into that a little bit? Yeah, I, I do know that uh, the Graham family, um, Mike Graham, his family had a, a huge uh, 
influence on the first class of donors and supporters of the Florida Shares Boys Ranch. Uh, I knew that in, in, uh, in, in when I was in at the Boys Ranch. Uh, there are a lot of pictures of, of the Graham family around there. Uh, I grew up a, a, a wrestling fan, um, watched it, you know, every Saturday and, and, and Monday. Uh, got in trouble a lot uh, because my grandmother used to love she was She loved wrestling. My mom used to go back and forth about me making, uh, allowing me to stay up late uh, during a school night. Uh, but who, I who definitely. Who was for you staying up? Was it your mom or your grandma? My, my grandmother was letting me stay up. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On Saturday mornings, uh, we got we you know we we had the option that she got up every Saturday morning. She cooked bre- you know breakfast like our Saturday most Saturday mornings now. You know, about tailgating, getting ready for the football game. No, was, my grandma was getting ready for wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> uh, she would cook, you know, fish and grits or sausage eggs and biscuits and all that stuff. And you watched He Man, you watched the Smurfs, and then Saturday Morning Slam. And and uh, uh, you know, she had a screen door, and she said, you know, when wrestling comes on, you either in or you out. If I hear my screen door slam one time. Uh, I'm gonna put the switch on your ass, and so yeah, <laughs> she uh, she was very, 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 uh, very much so a big. Well, uh, I can I can tell you were raised right when you brought up the word switch. Not a lot of people <laughs> know yeah, what yeah, a switch yeah. is. Yeah. I, I, I was people out in the country, we don't want to switch in, especially <laughs> when you had to go pick your switch off the willow yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you got a couple of leaves at the top so it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't want to get the real thin one because it, yeah. it yeah. left mark. Yeah. <laughs> the thick one just studded you. It hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Titus, when, when you were at the boys, did you at the boys ranch? Where? How did you play football? Was it part of the boys ranch? Did they have a team, or did you go off to a high school? No, I went into so we had school. You, you can either go to school on campus, or there are a lot of kids that had the opportunity to go to school off campus. So we had a van that took us to and from uh, school. Um, We had an activity bus that took us back to the boys' ranch as well. So uh, for those, you know, I I went to high school uh, at Swanee High School. Um, When I went to the boys' ranch, I was just before my 12th birthday. I was going into ninth grade um, right before my 13th birthday. And, um, uh, you know, I was was pumping a basketball walking down the hallway and, Football coach comes up to me and it's like, you know, he nudges me. He's a big dude to me at the time. Uh, nudges me and uh, he says, what you carrying around that basketball for? I was like, because I like to play basketball. And he was like, well, are you going to play football? And I was like, well, that's fine, but I'm going to still play basketball too. Because I'm... And he was like, well, you ain't going to get no scholarship in basketball. You're going to get a scholarship in football. And uh, same dude that told me I hadn't even made the team yet after he tried to run me off, you know. So he uh, he gave you know nobody got cut from our high school team. If you got through two a days, actually we had three a days, uh, one week, and then we had two a days another week. If you got through camp, you were on the team, no matter who you are. Plus, it was a small town. We 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 probably had thirty five people at the most on on our teams, but you know we were very very good at football. We won four state championships in a row. I think we're probably still one of the only high schools in the history of the state of Florida to do that. Um, and we weren't playing against scrubs. Uh, we played against really good schools. And most of the time, if we didn't play, the teams that we that were not in our district were all 4A, 5A, 6A schools. So we had to go to Tallahassee and we had to go to uh, Valosta, Georgia, and Lowndes County, Georgia, and Tifton, Georgia, in order to play um, competitive football. He purposely booked that schedule. Uh, because he wanted us to play against the, the best of the, against the best, and he also had a pride. We had a pride in life as a small town that you know we we're, we're gonna we're not afraid. You know our 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 uh, theme song coming out was a country boy can't survive. You know uh, we can skin a buck, we can run a trot line, but a country boy can't survive. You know, and and we all we all knew and felt we worked like country boys. You know, football was like everything then wrestling uh, was also everything we, we were very successful in wrestling i never wrestled in high school uh it was too damn hot and plus i, I love basketball so i wanted to play basketball like 120 in there in the, in the wrestling room and guys come out drenched 
it was tough, uh, you know. I know Swanee had had some good, good tough wrestlers up in that area there because I, you know, being a coach at at, at state tournaments, I'd, I'd check them all out. Those country yeah. boys, you know, the guy from Tampa hated wrestling those country boys because they were so strong and tough, and just had that mental attitude that's a little bit different. You know, I, I'm not going down easy if I go down at all. You know. Uh, there- they're, you know, we're accustomed to, uh, in, in the country, we're accustomed to, like, work, you know. Uh, we didn't have any options, you know what I mean? There were no clubs and, uh, um, you know, the beach or any of that stuff to go out at. We just, we worked, you know. In the off season we worked. We threw water balance. We tossed, you know, we built hay. We did all, we worked. And then in the weight room, it was just like, you know, we were just going in there just working. At, at the boys' ranch there, at, during the summertime when school was out, did, did you stay at the boys' ranch then, or, or did you have a summer job off the, off the facility or what? I actually worked on the ranch, um, and, uh, and except uh, like probably three weeks during the summer, uh, you know, one of our boosters from the booster club, he had a bunch of fields. He had a tobacco field. He had a, um, a, 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 a watermelon field. So we would make – we have a chance we get up early in the morning at seven o'clock and uh, toss watermelons to about noon, uh, and uh, we were able to make like one fifty a day, you know, which for for us, you know, that, we were balling. You know I mean, so <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, and so uh, so Titus, let me ask you a question because I, I grew up working on a ranch. We tossed hay, uh, which was different because you load, just throw it up on the truck, somebody loads it. When you're tossing melons, are you does, does somebody catch them? Because I've never done that. Yeah, so you're in a, in a field, and uh, it's you, it, it's assembly line. So the, uh, <laughs> they all bumper, and the bumper is the guy that's right by the, the trailer because we yeah. load up, pull out, and the bumper would always have to be the one you know that, that loads it up to the guys up in the truck. And little did I know, like you know, because I'm new to it, everything this and that, it's like, yeah, man, you're gonna be the bumper. That's the best part on it. That was the worst part, you know, because <laughs> if you feel like. You might get a you might get a watermelon you know here and, and there depending on where you are in the line. But if you get a bumper, you're getting every one from each direction that's coming on. <laughs> you got like six guys in the tra- in the truck. You got two bumpers, me and another guy, and we're just you know <laughs> working the left and the right, and right, left and the right. Uh, salt packets. Well, work work on your hand and eye coordination, though. Like grip strength, and uh, we. Uh, we had to have a lot, a lot of uh, salt packets. We used to go to Hardy's first thing in the morning and get uh, biscuit, chicken biscuits or, or sausage biscuits, and I'd take a whole bunch of salt packets. And uh, some of them guys I, uh, would have dipping tobacco out there, and it's, you know, 100 and something degrees, and they just thought they would dip in their mouth. I tried dip one time, and I felt like I was going to heaven, like right out of, out of uh I was dizzy. I was sick. I started throwing up, and I, didn't even, I just put it in my mouth, and I just – Get light, got lightheaded, and it's like, yeah, this is definitely not for me. Titus, you mentioned your your family, all the success they had going to high school, going to college. Your mother was a kid uh, when mm-hmm. she had you, and even for most of your uh, your childhood, she was still a child, pretty much herself. She must have been a special lady, though, to have that much success, and because there's no way you can be prepared at such a young age to have a child like that. Yeah, well, my mom was also very stubborn, which is something that runs in our family. Um, you're not going to tell her what you can't do and what can't be done. And, uh, you know, the decision that she made for me or to have me was very difficult. Um, I didn't find out how I was conceived until I was 17 years old. I was doing really well at the Florida Shares Boys Ranch. And my mom, you know, at the Boys Ranch, you didn't really have much interaction with your family until you went and visited home. And they purposely did that because while they were working on you at the ranch, there was a counselor working on your parent or your, you know, at, back at home to kind of, you know, help them along the way. Um, and my mom had a, a hell of a village. You know, she had a lot of people um, from various walks of life that helped her with us. You know, um, yeah, we lived in government housing, we lived in the projects, uh, you know, and uh, didn't have much for my, but my mom always was one that gave. You know, if she couldn't, you know, uh, she couldn't pay, you know, for certain things, she would bake pies, sweet potato pies. She definitely still makes one of the best sweet potato pies you've ever eaten in your life. 
Um, but she was a she always gave, even when she didn't have. There were other single mothers that were around um, that she would like share food stamps with. You know, they didn't have certain things. You know, they could come over to the house, and let the kids eat and stuff like. That. So, I really believe that my mom just being a really really giving didn't have much to give uh opened the people you know eyes and just realized she she was she is a very special woman uh for a multitude of reasons uh, and dealing with the trauma you know that she still you know is dealing with today um my mom never walked across the high school graduation stage you know she never went to a prom you know she never went on her first date, you know, or any of that stuff until years, years later, uh, just because of the trauma. And so uh, when people ask me, you know, who's who's my ultimate hero, I, it would be my mom. I wouldn't be here without her making the decision that she made at a very, very young age. I look at my kids and where they were when they were 10 or 11 years old and like to, you know, yeah. go through what she went through and, you know, have three Four boys to be college graduates, no college debt. Um, you know, all you know, very, very much so contributing to society in a positive way. Uh, none of us ever went to jail. None of us were ever on drugs. Um, and growing up where we grew, grew up at, I was like, really, literally, the only option is to be, be surprised if you you didn't have a record or you didn't work in, you know, on drugs or selling drugs. So, my mom is. Much like a lot of mothers out there, you know, single mothers especially, uh, she's just a very special woman. Uh, I'm very grateful to be able to still see her and talk to her uh, today. Um, uh, she's still alive and, you know, uh, and, and and doing everything she can to enjoy this thing for her life. She has some health issues, you know, some of those are self-inflicted because she won't work out and she won't eat well. Uh, and uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I can still pick up my phone um, and call my mom. And uh, there are a lot of people that, you know, unfortunately don't have that opportunity to do so for various reasons. Did she ever discuss with you her reason? I, I know her reasons. She wanted to have you. Uh, but did she ever discuss with you like uh, in, in any length or anything about that time that she decided to jump out of the car and say, I, I want to have this child? Um, I think. Uh, my mom was just like terrified of like what she thought of me, you know? And um, my mom also, my mom felt I was special and that I deserved to be here. You know, and I asked my mom, you know, several times, you know, what made you make And she said, um, I always knew that Know, even how about like you, you're special. My name, how I'm named, you know, my name isn't in the Bible. That's one of the chosen twelve disciples, you know, Michael, my middle name is who is like God. my last name is Bullard. You know, first four letters of you know, Bullard is bull, you know, strong and I'm a Taurus, you know, born in April and so everything about you know, my mom explanation, you know, I didn't know that right out of the gate. But I've I've had an opportunity to live, live it out, and realize like yeah, my mom, my grandmother too saw stuff that I, I you know I couldn't imagine some at that time, at that age. Right, and, and when she ended up telling you the the whole story, you were seventeen at the time, I and mean, that had 17. to be had to be really cool. But it almost seems like it's also a burden because you realize this person did a lot for me. I got to do a lot in life. You know, it, it, it's my mom, me and my mom had a very tumultuous relationship at, prior to that conversation. Like I, I hated my mom, legit hated my mom. Um, and when my mom told me how I was conceived, every ounce of hate that I had, is like turning heel to baby face. Like all the hate that I had towards my mom and the anger and everything else instantly turned into love because I realized at that time that my mom was a kid to raise kids. And you know, she you know, I asked her if she knew the person, you know, did this. And uh she said, Yeah, I said, you know, do you know where he is? Oh well she asked me, you know, do you want to meet him? And I said, Absolutely not. You know, 
so I'll probably kill him. And um, uh, I haven't looked looked for him. You know, there are some people that you know grow, don't, don't grow up with their father. They feel like there's an emptiness there, and this and that. And there was for quite some time, but I I had some. I mean, I had you know, Mr. Blaylock. Who I talk about in my book. You know, there's no such thing as a bad kid. He's the first person, he's the first African American superintendent of school to be elected in two different counties. Uh, you know, everything that he did for me, you know, taking me in. I stayed with him my last year, you know, at the board ranch. You know, they allowed me to live off campus, still be a part of the program. Uh, but everything he did, you know, I wanted to do. Um, uh, he became a member of Omega Incorporated, you know, Bill O'Neill, A. Lewis, Michael Jordan, goes on and on. And I'm in that fraternity as well. Uh, I wanted to do that because he, he went to the University of Florida. I wanted to do that, you know, because he did. You know, great, he's a great role model for so many different people. And he stood convictions, you know, where he ran, he had to run for office, you know, for the in the schools and uh you know i, I sat at the tables uh, at restaurants where white men would come and say hey you know charlie we, we don't support you you know um you know we, we're rooting for you i would slide him a, a check and say you know just don't tell anybody where you got that from and then he would slide back and say you know i appreciate the, the, the gesture but your if your support is not open not support you know, so he he took money. You know, he he, he made be held accountable for morals, and you feel like this is the right thing, doing the right thing, then share that with people. And if you don't think it, then don't don't do it with me. Do it with so Ty Tyler, so as you were coming up and you were you were you were starting to excel in football, did you have a little brothers? Or you said you had some brothers at the time, or? Say that again. When when you were when you were becoming a high school football star, did you have little brothers that that? Uh, you, yeah. did, were you close to your brothers at all? Was well, I was close to my brothers? Um, I mean, obviously, with the distance, we're about five and a half hours apart for a drive. Um, and I, you know, I only went home a few times a year, um, uh, and it was very short. Stay. Uh, but you know, when they when I got you know, told that I may have to go back to the boys' ranch. I may go back home to get kicked off. You know, at that time, my mom and brother, they were living in a two-bedroom apartment. It's like, where am I going to sleep, you know? And I was, was, that's what I was going to ask. Was there a time where you wanted to be with your brothers and your family and away from that? Uh, there were times um, that I, that I uh, very early on in the boys' ranch, just because I was only one of, like, three black kids on, on the campus. I had to call a white woman and a white man, mom and pop, you know, I didn't even have a pop or dad at home. Um, so that was really a, a big adjustment uh, for me, not because of the race, but just because I didn't have anyone to relate to me, you know, uh, relate to where I was coming from. Um, I didn't feel like they would understand. And uh, once I realized that, you know, these people are here to help, um, and I, the conversation that was had at 12 years old, that's, you know, he's uh, Mr. Pat Minogue, white guy from Chicago, I love the Bulls. I love the Bulls and, uh, because of Michael Jordan. And uh, he called me into the office and said, why do you think you get into trouble all the time? And I had my head down because I was getting ready to get kicked off. Um, and uh, I said, I don't know, man, I'm just a bad kid. And he said, lift your head up. He said, there's no such thing as a bad kid. And I said, how can you say that? You know, I told I'll be dead in jail by the time I'm 18. I'm getting ready to get kicked off the ranch. You know, I told him I'd never graduate from high school. The list goes on and on. And he said, well, I'm not going to do that because I truly believe in my heart. That's right for yourself. Um, I'm not, I'm going to a lot of people off because I'm not going to stay home, even though the decision was made that you would be going to come back home. But I'm going to tell you something and I want you to believe it. He said, I love you. I believe in you. Now, a lot of people had told me that they loved me, but then turned around and abused me, beat me, cursed me, etc. But nobody had ever told me to believe that I could do anything. It was always the opposite, that things that I can't do, the things that I won't do. Um, and, and again, I've always had a, a rebellious spirit. Uh, so at that point, I realized I need to start believing in myself, you know. 
and uh, slowly but surely, uh, I started achieving little things that people tell me that I wouldn't do, and then uh, it became habit. And now, you know, at 45 years old, there's nothing that anybody can look at that can't be done. Uh, you know, we, we're here, live here in Tampa. I remember the first time I gave away 10,000 gifts at Raymond James Stadium. They looked at me like I had five heads. One, because I said I wanted to do it, and it was October, and I hadn't even booked the stadium yet. And, uh, and two, because it had never been done. And, uh, you know, I just truly believe that when I feel and think something in my mind, my heart, like, I'll get it done. And, you know, lo and behold, you know, 13 years in running, you know, we have a big event at Raymond James Stadium, got bigger and bigger each year. Uh, we're in the sea of Georgia now. We just started off our campaign. I'm partnered with Metropolitan, which we're very aware of. Uh, we're going to reach 37 counties in seven different counties or Tampa Bay area um, with food and clothing and toys and, uh, and, and uh, rental assistance uh, with hotel stays, especially with those from uh, uh, down in our neighborhood down in Lee County, um, uh, affected by Hurricane Ian. Uh, this place, we're trying to work with the there were folks that were already in destitute situations prior to the hurricane, but it just got wiped out afterwards. So we're trying to help them. There and working with the law enforcement agencies down um, to just try to continue to build people up uh, and just still do the same thing. Um, there's there's nothing in this world, that, in my opinion, with the right people, the right time, opportunity. Um, and uh, I've, I've seen way too much success at saying we're going to do this. we got a school, a public school named here in Tampa. Um, Hey, Titus, doing... I want to. I'm, I don't mean. Cut you off. I'm sorry. I, I, I want to ask you about that because you're you're a kid who grew up and <laughs> thought you wouldn't even graduate high school, dead or, or in jail at, by the age of thirty. You've got a school named after you. Now I know you're not <laughs> one to pat yourself on the back, but that's got to be pretty cool to drive by and see your name on a school. Yeah, not just drive by, be at it, walk the campus. Uh... Put it up at five o'clock in the morning to go and work out. You know, I built a really first class gym there for teachers to work out there. Uh, we're, we're in the process of uh, building out a robotics lab and a mental health and wellness space and um, a TV and production studio. And this is you know, sixth through eighth grade school. But it's more or less about what we're putting there and more about what's happening there. You know, I put the school on a house system uh, uh, three and a half years ago. Similar to, you know, there's a school in Atlanta, Ron, Ron Clark Academy. I sent all the administrators up there. Uh, his on uh, the word based on uh, character. Mine, mine is based on the word pride, which is what I want people to have. Um, uh, and, and it's the sick living in poverty and it's important. And I uh, went there to give kids birthday parties that could to have birthday parties because I never had a birthday party as a kid. That morphed into a character program where I started honoring kids that had academic success, improvement, perfect attendance. And then had a meeting with the school district here and said, hey, I want to try this, you know, uh, this system and see if we can change the F school for years. So the, the bad school. Uh, I was once known Bad kid. So the same kids that we we uh, work on a consistent basis are labeled the same way that I was labeled. And uh, through work, we graduated from an F to a C plus. You know, sixty seven point uh, increase, the highest in in uh, all of the entire Hillsborough County schools. And uh, and just keep kept building. Uh, we got a first class field there. We have a uh, first class gymnasium. We were the last school district. Yeah, we were the last school in the gym getting ready to build a street there, prosperity center on campus, which will help the neighboring school people in that zip code uh, with everything from legal aid to uh, very illegal. We have a partnership with them. We everything except for criminals. So tenant issues, land tax issues, whatever, they can come there. Um, we have a culinary program that helps pay them a livable wage. They come there for 12 weeks. I work four days a week, nine, uh, three in school. 
and then we place them in uh, profitable jobs. Uh, we have a financial literacy program, Southern Coast Credit Union, which is the largest credit union in the state of Florida. Um, and uh, each one of the people that participate, they get their own personal financial literacy company to meet with several times a month. Once they save a thousand, our foundation matches it two thousand dollars if they need adequate transportation. We end up helping them with a new car. Um, and then hopefully they stay in the financial literacy course and working with that coach bring them into self security. Hopefully they'll become first home um, too. the list goes it's so so much, but it's it's not just at that school. I've helped so many in the school district, which is why I'm honored with that title uh, of having a next school named after me. I've literally done so much for so many kids, students, and teachers in the district for years. Uh, and I never expected it in a million years that 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 I was able to kick it and be dead in jail by the time he was 15. Uh, to have you drive down South by Avenue and 22nd, the Thaddeus and Bullard Academy at Sly Middle Magnet School. Titus, what is your what is your goal? You've done so much stuff and you've done so many great things. What is your end game? Do you have one? Are you just going to keep building what you're building, which is remarkable, and you're doing changing lives and saving lives, which is incredible? But do you want to do something you want to? expand this you want to replicate this what is your goal say for five ten years from now uh from a foundation standpoint and philanthropic standpoint yeah we we want to continue to on this model so that athletes entertainers men and women can uh duplicate this in other uh destitute areas um we want to build a model <coughs> this and uh we can literally show from a personal standpoint uh, you know, I'm investing in, a, in, a, in a, uh, a lot of stuff. I have a restaurant group here um, that we have uh, two new restaurants opening up. I, I hope Mr. Briscoe hit up for Beachy Park, which is one of our concepts. Uh, we're opening up Boulon in, in, uh, in uh, late December and then in February, early February, we're opening up Union Restaurant as well over by the airport. Uh, I'm invested in two is uh, uh, the new age version of technology. It's a replacement green screen technology. Watch Mandalorian or Star Wars or any of those Disney movies. Actually, WWE is used here in Tampa, uh, but we just built enough Las Vegas. We have a one in Nashville and partnered uh, with uh, many people. In Orlando. We just opened up one in Orlando and soon we will have at WWE headquarters up in Stanford, Connecticut. Um, so really excited about. Um, I have a water filter company done very well. We water commercial and residential homes, um, and I enjoy watching it grow. Uh, my personal goal is to continue to be in film. I'm on my way. I have a couple of opportunities that hopefully I'll Hollywood and doing some really cool stuff on television and. Working, uh, working in that space. My, one of my best friends, Dave. Uh, obviously, Dwayne Rock John well. John Cena's done well. Um, so hopefully, I'll get a chance to go out there and, and bust my uh, break out my acting chops and and, uh, and do well in that space too. Uh, been on Good Morning America several times this year, so who knows? I might be coming from my straight job as a as a as a as an anchor there. I, uh, but they, they, I really enjoy working with the Good Morning America production crew. Obviously, I really truly feel like my my position here in WWE as a global ambassador and continue to go out and legacies and help set legacies with our fellow my fellow WWE female and male superstars uh, and represent a company that really on the path to continue to change and continue to grow in so many different ways. Uh, you know. I definitely would like to be opposite Jake Bell uh, with uh, with uh, him and Corbin and me and uh, me. <laughs> I, uh, I hope I hope you don't think that I'm getting in the ring. <laughs> no, no, no. We both are in this, you know kind of in that same space where uh, uh, yeah I'll get I'll get physical if I need to, but I'd much rather uh, be the one that kind of. Calms your heat down because you have been. <laughs> TV's been 
between you and Sami Zayn being on television, man, this has been so, so, uh, so entertaining. And uh, very happy to see you, see you back doing well, Thank you. you. I aggravated. appreciate that. And I've always had fun working with you. Uh, we've had so much fun. We have fun on YouTube. We've had fun a lot of, a lot of different places. The problem mm -hmm. is now, if I took a bump for you, I could take a bump. I just couldn't get up. <laughs> the time would be over with for sure. Yeah, he'd be done. He'd, he'd, he'd. But you're a great bump. Is he dead? <laughs> we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun on YouTube. We had a lot of fun everywhere. We we had some good times. Yes, sir. Commentary, you know. Absolutely. Uh, the infamous vomit, you know. On That's right, old Michael Cole. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> you know your, you know, seven thousand dollar hat. <laughs> That's right. You got me. Threw up in my hat. You threw up on Cole. <laughs> Which I, I didn't mind. I didn't mind at all. You throwing up on Michael Cole. The hat. Yeah, yeah. The hat bothered me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hundred percent doing that. It would have bothered me too. Hi, Thomas. How how can the folks listen to reach out to your foundation and 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 help you help you uh, uh, tame your goal? Do you have all your websites, your social media pages? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, they can go to BullardFamilyFoundation.org, B-U-L-L-A-R-D, FamilyFoundation.org. They can also follow us on all platforms, social media, uh, on Twitter and Instagram, at BFF Tampa. And uh, they can go to our website and figure out ways they can get involved. They can donate um, things that we have upcoming and, um, uh, and see what we have, what we're doing and what we've been doing and what's to come. Great. Well, I know. I know. With Thanksgiving coming up, you're you're so involved with Metropolitan Ministries, which is a, a wonderful organization, a organization that's really met the test of time. And uh, all you got to do, if you're around here in Tampa and you want to make contributions, just go downtown and see a big white tent uh, over the side of town there, and that, that's the Metropolitan Ministries. Yeah, yes, you can sir. Drop all food supply there for Thanksgiving. You can go help help me out there, Titus. Philly Fisher. Yeah. Oh yeah, Metropolitan Metro Metro Ministries is a great partner of, of, of mine, not just during the holiday season, but throughout the year. Um, I don't have a huge staff with my foundation, so I partner with them uh, because they have the infrastructure. Yeah, I can garner the resources and, and help uh, raise funds and money, uh, but at the end of the day, I need you know volunteers and, and, and staff that can help uh, facilitate the mission, uh, whatever that mission is at the time. Uh, you know, we have... Uh, over 30 partners this year, uh, which we didn't have last year, 30 partners throughout not only the Tampa Bay area, but stretching all the way down to Lee County uh, that are drop-off points, uh, pickup points, et cetera. Uh, we have 17 other agencies that are working alongside us uh, that they'll be, you know, starting in Thanksgiving, they'll be able to come. Uh, you know, I've been starting my Thanksgiving morning every morning for the past 14 years uh, at Metropolitan Ministries. Uh, at uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, uh, doing uh, helping put together meals so that we could ship out uh, at minimum 3,000 meals, uh, hot meals, uh, to various locations throughout the Tampa Bay area. So we'll be doing that again this year. We look to hopefully have about 4,500 hot meals that we can deliver uh, with our partner agencies. And so if you're interested in, in, uh, in joining that mission, um, and I tell people all the time, if you can't do it now, Whenever you get into a position to do it, just do it. If you can't give money, give your time. If you can't give time, give your resources, whatever those resources may be. And, uh, some people don't even know where to start, you know, when it comes to giving back. I always tell people just start with, with, with something simple that you know for a fact that you can do. Buy somebody a cup of coffee, you know, uh, buy somebody a slice of pizza, you know, have a conversation with somebody um, that may be out. You know, you, you'll learn so much. And uh, um, the great thing that I've and really enjoyed about being a part of WWE is being able to travel all over the world and learn and grow from so many different people, cultures, et cetera. And uh, I love, you know, obviously living in the United States of America. Uh, we get a lot of stuff right, but we get a lot of stuff wrong and uh, a lot of stuff wrong that they don't get wrong in other places. Uh, mass shootings don't happen in other places, you know, in schools. Um, you know, I go to places like Saudi Arabia or Japan and China, you don't see homelessness um, because the government doesn't want that. It's about respecting and taking care of the people. And um, 
that's what I, I hope that we can get to one day. Um, and if don't rely on the government to do it, don't rely on some of the, some of the larger agencies sometimes to do it, you gotta rely on each other to do it. Because when we have a hurricane hit or a tropical storm hit, uh, people from all walks of life come out of the woodwork to give clothes, to give water, to give electricity, your neighbors, my neighbors, you know, all of us, my neighbors around me, they're helping. I, 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 I don't like, you know, I could never be great in ladder match because I, I don't like getting three feet off the ground at all. Uh, so, uh, having my neighbors come and help me put my, my sh uh, shutters up, uh, hurricane sh uh, shutters up and stuff like that. And they go and they do it at everyone's house. And I have neighbors from all different walks of life. And it's not about what color we are, what race we are, what sexual orientation. It's about good people helping other good people. And uh, if we want to be the greatest country in the world, um, we truly need to start by being greatest people in the world and that starts with each and every single one of us we have that opportunity to wake up and make a decision to be a great human being to our fellow man or woman um and uh that's that's my mission you know long you know as long as i live because i do realize how very fortunate i am to be in a position that i am financially to be in the position that i am physically spiritually emotionally um and uh it's a blessing, man. It really is to uh, to to, uh, to live this life, you know, not perfect, uh, but in the perfect will of God. And uh, God had a plan, and uh, I didn't understand it, and none of us understand it sometimes with some of the health issues we may have. To do. Um, as uh, Mr. Briscoe coughs right into the television, you know. <laughs> <into> the... <laughs> well, hey, he's 130. He does that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we we are very fortunate you know a lot of stuff can happen to us very hurtful and life and death happens and life situations happen um but at the end of the day we're still standing and uh it could be worse yeah Thomas, i've loved since i've known you getting to see what all you've done it's just it's not just good for the business it's an inspiration to anybody who wants a better place to go. And I agree with you. It's not about the government doing stuff. It's about us doing stuff. And, and you're not preaching that you're living that and that living that you're doing is a sermon. And it's been so much fun to watch. I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad to know you. And uh, I know you're incredibly busy. So thank you for taking so much of your time tonight to just, uh, be here with uh, me and Mr. Briscoe while he's coughing and hopefully not dying. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, you know, John, I want to jump in there just to tie it to us, you know, being in the same town, you know, we're, we're blessed because this is, Tampa's a resting town, a lot, a lot of people. You wake up in the mornings and a lot of times there's not positive news. You know, some of some of our, 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 our brothers and sisters out here in the business don't lead the life that, that you lead there. But when I wake up in the morning and I, I, I see an I, I article in the paper about professional wrestling, your name on it. I know it's going to bring a smile on my face. I, I'm extremely proud to live in the same neighborhood as you. I'm extremely proud to live in the same community as you. Tampa Bay is blessed to have Titus, uh, Titus Boulder in, in our community. And you're one of the truly nice guys of our business. We really appreciate you being on our show tonight. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, man. From uh, two Hall of Famers and a half a Hall of Famer, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>